The gallbladder gut secret doctors rarely mention. Symptoms of gallbladder issues include pain in your right upper abdomen. This can radiate around to the back of your shoulder blade. You can have a fullness after even a small meal. Gassy, bloating, belching, having a bitter taste in your mouth, chronic diarrhea, nausea or vomiting after a fatty meal. You can also have constipation, headaches, fatigue. So we want to look at what the gallbladder does. First of all, some statistics, about 10 to 12% of the population, adult population, don't have a gallbladder anymore. That doesn't mean you still don't make bile, you do. Uh, and also another up to 20% of the population have gallbladder issues in the range of having gallstones or having sludge, which is a sort of a thicker bile that's developed. So let's look at what bile normally does when it's healthy and, and you have a gallbladder. Uh, what it does is it's antimicrobial, so it kills off bad organisms in your gut. And it also by virtue of that controls bacterial overgrowth, meaning not allowing bad bacteria to multiply. So bile is very caustic in a good way. It's very alkaline. And in that caustic fashion, it's, it's killing off bad bacteria, which is very important in addition to allowing you to absorb fat soluble vitamins. So very, very crucial for, for overall health. And uh, so it, it, it helps you balance your microbiome. So that is the anywhere from 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon that are very key to not only gut health, but also the health of your immune system, hormonal balance. Your microbiome does a tremendous amount to, to keep you healthy, but when it's in balance as it is for many, many Americans, then we have a number of issues. So on this channel, we talk about a lot about hiatal hernia. We've talked a lot about acid reflux. And when you have uh, bile issues, whether it's that thicky, thick, thick, sludgy bile or having gallsto gallstones or you've lost your gall gallbladder, you're more likely to have bile reflux and acid reflux. And then due to this uh, microbiome imbalance, you, you have increased what's called intra-abdominal pressure due to the inflammation that's been created. And that that in inflammation and pressure can lead to hiatal hernia. So that's the way it's all connected. Now, if you've had surgery and you no longer have your uh, gallbladder, what happens is you, you've lost that inherent intelligence of what the gallbladder does. So your liver actually makes the bile, but the gallbladder stores it. And the gallbladder senses that you've eaten fat in your meal and it pulses bile into your upper small intestine just below uh, your stomach connects to your small intestine uh, the stomach has emptied its contents into the small intestine and the gallbladder says oh there's some fat in that meal i'm going to help and it secretes bile into that upper small intestine and you you get again this um, digestion ability of breaking down the fats but you also get the antimicrobial ability which is so important and uh, that's how it functions normally but when you've lost your gallbladder, what occurs is that you don't get that nice pulse of the gallbladder knowing that there's fat in the meal and they're, they've reconnected your, um, the tubing of your body such that there's constantly a small trickle of bile coming from your liver. And it's constant. It can't be controlled because you don't have the gallbladder anymore. So because of that constant trickle, it, it tends to be not enough bile and also um, because it's less potent, you don't get that great antimicrobial uh, ability as well as not digesting your fats as well, which is why post-surgery you can get a lot of uh, diarrhea and, and the symptoms that I've mentioned earlier associated with uh, bile imbalance or gallbladder imbalance. Now, what if you have your gallbladder, but it's not healthy, meaning the, the bile has gotten kind of sludgy or thick, or you've even formed stones. Now you can, there's much that can be done for this other than removal. Now removal is, is necessary at times, but sometimes it's done a bit premature. But what happens because of this sludgy nature of the bile, uh, we have the same issue where, um, it's called stasis. It's moving too slowly. And so again, not enough is coming in to your small intestine as is appropriate and normal. 
and again, you're not getting the antimicrobial ben benefits and you get more inflammation. You get dysbiosis, meaning more bad bacteria than good bacteria. You're not breaking down your fats as well. So when you're not absorbing your, your fat as well and you get fat malabsorption, you also get fat uh, fermenting in your colon and that's actually feeding your bad bacteria. So that's an important point to note. The good news is, is there's a great deal that you can do to enhance your bile function, even if you don't have your gallbladder, and to give your gallbladder a break so that you can retain it instead of losing it to surgery. So, and what's important about this is that from the overall viewpoint of gut health is you have more beneficial bacteria, you don't have that increased pressure, you're not losing your, your fat-soluble vitamins through chronic diarrhea, and uh, overall gut health, better energy, better digestion, less inflammation, less chance of a number of different diseases. So the far-reaching effects are quite vast. So let's start with what do you do? You can support your uh, bile motility or your gallbladder motility. Things like basic magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids. Now I'm gonna go through a lot of different things you can do. I'm not prescribing these for you. I'm not your doctor, so you have to find somebody who will work with you who is um, very savvy in this area and they won't look at you like you're crazy when you <laughs> mention trying to enhance gallbladder function. So it's a functional medicine clinician, an integrated clinician, somebody who does this day to day and they're very familiar with these types of things. Okay, so that's who you need to find. And if you need our help, of course, we're here for you. So supporting gallbladder motility, we just went over. Uh, also supporting bile quality. It's amino acids like taurine and glycine. There's phosphatidylcholine, uh, bitters, ox bile, all of these things, of course, you need help with. Digestive enzymes with bile salts, these can all be very helpful. Now you also want to promote the healthy bacteria within your gut. So prebiotics, probiotics, a fiber-rich diet is all helpful here. You want somebody to help you address SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which can occur subsequent to having these gallbladder issues, but it itself needs to be addressed because it's creating a lot of imbalance on its own. It's creating a lot of intra-abdominal pressure, can cause acid reflux as well as bile reflux and hiatal hernia. So you need somebody to help you address that if that's present. You also want to bind these toxic bile acids. So um, they can, you know, we talked about the negative effects. So binding them are things that are soluble fibers, and you can look up what those are and see how you feel utilizing that. There's also just repair of the mucosa. I mentioned that bile is very caustic, it's very alkaline, and when it's going to the right tissues as it's designed to do, it's not caustic, there's nothing negative about it because you know the stomach is, is of course highly acidic and when the stomach contents leave into the small intestine and then the bile alkaline, you know, the actual actual opposite, right, of acid is alkaline. And when those two mix, then you get a nice balance and mother nature's you know, brilliant in how this body was designed. So it's, it's not a negative, the bile is never a negative when things are functioning as they should, but when they're not, then you can get sort of toxic bile acids and the soluble fibers can really help bind those and break those down. Now mucosal repair is what I was up to and um, sort of being kind of calming to, to the mucosa, whether it's in the stomach or the colon, things like glutamine, zinc, DGL, which is short for deglycerized licorice, even melatonin is very helpful for this. You also wanna address environmental toxins because you want the liver to not be overwhelmed regardless whether you still have a gallbladder or not. So addressing any environmental toxins is helpful and supporting the liver itself. Uh, milk thistle is something, it's also known as silomarin. Uh, curcumin is helpful. And then there's the diet. So reducing the dietary triggers that are overburdening the liver as well as the gallbladder. And our favorite ultra processed foods, sugar, alcohol are all negatives in addition to just bad fats. So good fat is very important. Bad fats are going to overburden uh, the liver and gallbladder. 
and then we have to monitor our fat soluble vitamins because maybe you're getting diminished in your A, D, E, and or K because of the malfunctioning of the, the gallbladder and the bile is not as efficient. So you want to monitor those vitamin levels because they're very critical for overall health. And last but not least, reducing your visceral fat, meaning your belly fat. So the belly fat is, is toxic, it's creating a lot of pressure and uh, intra-abdominal pressure and overall creating a lot of inflammation. So that was a long list, I know, but uh, getting some assistance to balance the liver gallbladder so that you're not losing your gallbladder, but even if you have lost your gallbladder, there's much that can be done to enhance bile flow because you still do have that flow and overall what we want i want you to appreciate is the fact that your liver and gallbladder is very tied into whether you have uh, not just bile reflux bile going the wrong way up into the stomach and potentially up into your esophagus creating symptoms very much like acid reflux that do not respond to antacids because of course it's not acid it's alkaline uh, and also aggravating acid reflux and aggravating hiatal hernia. So this is all tied together. And unfortunately, the gallbladder, it's kind of ignored until we have severe symptoms and then all too often it's removed. And I'm not saying there is not cause for gallbladder removal. It can absolutely, it can get infected. Uh, the, 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 the bile duct can get blocked and it, it can be quite serious. And so the surger, surgery is the correct action at that time. But a little too often we have gallbladders being removed that, that aren't to that level and they can repair. Pretty most often the body's ability to repair itself is, is very inherent, very strong if you do the right things for it. So I think a lot of gallbladders can be salvaged and it's well worth the effort. And then of course, how it, it fits into this overall digestion picture. So I hope that was informative for you. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. That really helps the channel. It helps more people see this information so that they are better prepared and how to take care of their health and uh, send me a comment. I answer all my comments. I'd love to hear from you and we'll talk soon.